We talked about God's eternal purpose. God has always had a plan. But in the... As Jesus called out his church, Satan always works. Satan is never still. If God does something, Satan will imitate it always. He will always imitate it. And that's why we have all these churches out here and there's a great mass of confusion of what, who, is, who is the representative of God. Well, <clears throat> the representative of God preach God's word. That's what they do. Now, as you look at this little map up here, and I gave one of these to you, I'll give another one to you, Bob. No, I think you have, have some. some yeah. She had it somewhere. You'll have one of these, always. And that helps you to understand God's plan, what he has for, uh, with, for mankind. In Ephesians 6, chapter, it says, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for the sake of you Gentiles, now, all of us are Gentiles that aren't Jews. Now, I'm part Jewish, uh, very far removed, but, but I, I, well, let's put it this way, I'm a descendant of Abraham. Probably my blood is more Arabian than it is Jewish. For indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for you, the stewardship. The word steward is an old English word. It, it, it means sty ward. and ward. Sty ward. Now, <clears throat> in ancient times and the dark ages, that's where our word steward comes from in the English language. Sty is uh, a pen. A pen, a corral. And a ward is somebody that takes care of that pen. And God said here, through Paul, he said, I indeed, you've heard of the stewardship of God's grace, the stewardship. So, in, in England, and probably all the way in Hungary or wherever, they had a lot of princes, didn't they? There's a lot of kings and princes. And pretty much the kings and princes owned almost everything. Well, the prince and the kings, they had great corrals of horses. They had corrals of pigs. They had corrals of cattle or whatever. And they had a person that was over that, and he was called the steward. Hmm. Now, Paul said, I am a steward over... Now, God, in Ephesians 1st chapter, says that he, bar... he, he has marked us, branded us, all for salvation. And, Bob, you said, how in the world did you live this long? You've been through World War II. You were a, 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 a child soldier in World War II. And you almost got killed many times. And a few weeks ago, you asked the Lord, say, the Lord Jesus Christ to save your soul. All these years, people, God keeps you alive. My stepfather, uh, Dusty Wilford Rhodes, he uh, got contacted lung cancer, and it was terminal. He went to different churches to, to seek healing, and it didn't work. The last time I took him to church, now, I didn't believe in all this healing business, I, even though God does heal people, but you don't have the power to heal people. Okay, that's, that's in Bible days, not today. Anyway, I took him there. They blamed it on me and, uh, because he wasn't healed and everything, but the last day that he went to one of these meetings, he went down to the front, and he kneeled down there, and he asked God to save his soul. And then he came up from there just joyous that he was saved. He was raised in a religious element that he was afraid that if he'd saved, he'd lose his salvation and never get it back again. So he was never saved all his life, even though he knew God and everything. He was afraid to make that step of commitment, afraid that he would lose his salvation. Salvation is in Christ Jesus, not us. Anyway, on the way home, he told me, Jimmy, he said, Jim, you were right all your life. I've wasted all of my life. 
I could have done so much for God if I had just believed and, and asked Him to save me and forgive me of my sins. He said, I've wasted all my life. I said, Dad, you have life today. God got you this far to save your soul. I had a friend in the Bakersfield area just, just last week. I was down there by accident, almost, and his brother came in my yard. He said, my brother's dying. And we don't know whether they saved or not. We don't know whether they ever made a confession of faith or not. Jim, he said, we want you to talk to him. Mm -hmm. We want you to talk to him. He won't talk to anybody but you. He said, I try to get other preachers. He just tells them to leave. He wants you. I went down there and I prayed with him. And he was in bad shape. He had waited for me. He had kept alive for me to come there. Because he wanted me to give him the words of life. And I talked to him. And I prayed with him. And he went to sleep. Like that. And he never woke up again. God, 89 years. God kept that man alive through fires. He was a firefighter for 33 years. He went through very dangerous times. But God gave him and kept him through those times so that he would be saved that moment. That moment. His wife's family and my family have been associates for 150 years, since about 1850 or 60. Our families have been close and known each other for all of those years. And it was a privilege. Now I have to go back and preach his funeral. God uses us in mysterious ways. Let's see what it says here again. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for the sake of you Gentiles, indeed, which you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelations there was made known to me the secrets, the secrets as I wrote you beforehand. Secrets. Paul talks about a lot of the secrets of God. We come through here and we look down here when Adam was in the garden. We looked in the eternity past when Satan rebelled against God, when he destroyed the earth and all, and got one third of the angelic and spiritual forces against. And this is where demons were began. Satan was not bad when God created him. He became bad. Adam was perfect when God created him, but he became bad. But all of us are descendants of Adam. And each and every one of us has Adam's blood in us. And in Adam's blood is sin, and in the nature of sin. But Jesus Christ, Galatians 4 and verse 4 says, When the fullness of time had come, come God sent forth his Son, made of a woman. Woman cannot pass on the sin nature. Made of a woman, made under the law, that he might redeem us that were cursed under the law. The mystery of Christ. The secrets. And by referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, the secret of Christ. Now, the Catholic Church talks about the divine mysteries. The divine mysteries. And they take the Eucharist, they take baptism, they take marriage, they take all of this. And this is a sacrament or a vehicle of grace, according to them. And they say that they are the emissaries or custodians of God's word in the world today. But all of that is a fog, a smoke screen, like we have all the smoke. And that's what it's been. And we saw how Catholicism evolved. The Catholic Church didn't begin until 325 with Constantine. Before that, all the churches were known as Christians. We saw how that the Catholic Church brought different doctrines into the church and different ideas in the church that made a big smoke screen as we see today. How many, how many fires are in California, Bob? Uh, 575. 575 fires. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a smoke screen out there. When I was out there in Old River, there were times that I couldn't see 100 yards for the smoke. And in the religious circles in the world today, that's the way it is. We've got Mormons, we've got Catholics, we've got all kinds of people. We've got Jehovah Witnesses, and all these people are trying to get to heaven. 
It's a smoke screen. If you study the Word of God, the Word of God tells you that way. It says, which in generations past was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now by the revelation of the Holy holy apostles and prophets and the Spirit, to be specific that the Gentiles are now fellow heirs. That means us Gentiles. The Jews had the absolute administration of God's kingdom ever since Moses. But what did they do with it? Over here, I have the Mishnah, I have the Talmud, and I have the Kabbalah. All of these things that they have written explaining the Word of God and they just leave the Word of God there. Stay over there. You will take our, our interpretations. And what did Catholicism do? Catholicism borrowed greatly from Judaism. Jesus came on the scene and he told them, You are what? Pharisees, hypocrites, and devils. John the Baptist called them devils. He said, You've taken the Word of God and made it to none effect by your traditions, by your dogmas by your practices. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's what Paul said. And that's what Peter said also. The Catholic Church says that Peter is the rock. The church was built upon Peter because Peter, Petros means rock. Petros doesn't mean rock, it means pebble. Out here, you can get a pebble in your shoe, can't you? A little pebble. But I'll guarantee you, you go down to Morro Bay and you can't get that rock in your shoe, that great big rock. You can't, you, you have you seen Gibraltar? Uh, Bob, have you seen Gibraltar out there in the Mediterranean? Have you seen that no, big no, rock? No, I've never saw you back. I'll tell you what, that's a big rock. It's you can't big, get that in your shoe. No way. A little too large. Peter said that the rock is Christ. The Catholic Church said the rock is Peter. <laughs> But Peter says the rock is Christ. Jesus said the rock is himself. He said, Thou art Petros, a little stone, but upon this gigantic rock I'll be building my church, and the gates of hell shall not wrestle her down. Well, we still have the word of God preached in the world today. It said the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Here we come all the way through time. We come up here to Moses. Moses was given the law, and those Jews knew the law. In John, the third chapter, there was a guy named Nicodemus. You know what Nicodemus means? It comes from Nico and Demos, two words. Demos means people, and Nico means to conquer. And what it is, it, it, it's got the idea of somebody breaking up these great protests. You know, we've had protests all over America because yes. of this George guy, which basically was nothing but a reason to protest, a reason to riot. Nicodemus' name means riot buster. That's what his name means, Nicodemus. But Nicodemus was a Pharisee and he was a teacher, a master teacher of Israel. And Jesus told him in John the third chapter, I'm going to go there just quickly uh, and read this to you. I could read it to you from the heart, but I'm going to read it to you right out of the Bible here. Mine's so written up I could hardly read it. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night, came to him by night and said to him, Rabbi, we. Now we is a first person plural pronoun in it. We. Now, he didn't say I, but he said we. Now who is Nicodemus representing him? He's representing the Sanhedrin. He's representing the Pharisees. He said, we know that you have come from God as a teacher. Now, not all of those Pharisees said that, but there must have been a group of those Pharisees who got together and said, Nicodemus, we're going to send you as an emissary for us, and I want you to talk to Jesus. We want you to go see firsthand what's going on. Now, many people say, well, he came to him and sneaked in there by night. Well, that's the only time he could catch him was by night. He was out preaching all day long. But he must have had guards with him because I'm going to tell you something. When you, at that period of time in Israel, when you went out there at night time under the cover of night, a Sakari might get you. What's a Sakari? 
They're the mafia, the Jewish mafia. They settled Sicily. Hmm. Later on, those are the ones, the Sicari is the ones that made their last stand at Masada. That's the Sicari. That's not the basic juicy pe Ju Jewish people. They were an elite zealot group that killed Romans. They would sneak out and kill Romans. And one of the leaders of them was the one that, that, uh, that the high priest says, Give us Barabbas, and you crucify Jesus. Barabbas was the leader of the Sicari. The leader of Sicari is, the, is one of the people that went down there and caused the, the nation of Israel to fall and Jerusalem be leveled. There at Masada. The 10th Roman Legion came in there and built a ramp to go up into that city. They thought they were impregnable. The Roman government was sick of the Jews and sick of the Sicari, and they were going to stop it once for all. They were tired of fooling with them. Rabbi, we know as the Jewish group, as the, as the Pharisees, that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one else can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Now, many of the Jews said the devil was with him, didn't they? The devil helped you do all these things. You learned that down in Egypt. And Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, born again. Now, that's not an unusual term to Nicodemus. You know what being born again was? A, a proselyte, somebody besides a Jew could come into the Jewish people and say, I want to be a Jew. I want to be a follower of Moses. And they say, okay, you have to denounce your birth, your Gentile birth. You have to go and learn the law. And you have to repeat to us in a synagogue that you believe in the law of God and, and you have to repeat the commandments and then you have to be shaved all over your body like a newborn baby. I saw my little grandson, great grandson, yesterday. And he's got a lot of white blood. He didn't have any hair. <laughs> the little guy had blue eyes even. Babies, except for Indian babies, were born with a lot of hair. A little white babies and most of the babies in the world are born little bald heads. And then they get little fuzz. Well, the Jews would take a Gentile and shave all his hair off, clip his fingernails back, and wash him thoroughly, shave all of his body, and then they would take him and they would baptize him, and they would say, baptize, you die as your old natural birth, whatever you were, Ethiopian, Greek, whatever, and you're raised anew as a child of Abraham and the son of Israel. That's what being born again was, according to the Jews. Now, Nicodemus, is, uh, he's skirting the issue here because Jesus told Nicodemus, you've got to be saved. You're religious, that's nothing. You've got to be saved. You have to come to know me. You have to know God in a personal way. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless God, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot understand the kingdom of God. Verse number four said, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he again enter into the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Now this is ridiculous, isn't it? That, you can't do that. He was skirting the issue. He was not giving Jesus a direct answer. Jesus looked at Nicodemus. He said, Nicodemus, he said, you're not religious, but you're lost. You know you've been telling all these grandchildren that they needed to be born again, born from above. You need to be born again. And then Nicodemus said, well, you know, he's a prideful man. These, these Pharisees were the modern Orthodox Jew, you know, that's a Pharisee today. They're pretty, uh, what we might call Bigot. Bigotry. They're full of bigotry, aren't they? They're full of themselves. They're full of, we're the people of God. But right now, they're enemies with God. As Paul would say later. He said, truly unto I say unto you, unless it's born of water and of the Spirit. Now, when we're born the first time in this world, uh, a woman's water breaks, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And then the child comes forth. You're born naturally. The first time we're born into this world, we're born cursed because of our 
Father Adam. But when we're born again, we're born from above. We have a new birth, a new birthday. We've got a brand new birthday. You had a birthday the first time when you're born of your father, and you got a birthday the second time when you're born of your father in heaven above. He said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless it's born of water and of the Spirit, and the Spirit of God is what convicts you that you need to be saved, that you need to ask God to save you, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You cannot understand the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. When you're born the first time, you're your father's child. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. When you're born again, then you're God's son. And by the way, once you've been born again, you can't get unborn. Never will you lose your sonship with God. It's yours forever because you've been born of Him. How can you be unborn? How can you be unborn? Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? How can these things be? And Jesus answered to them, He said, "You Are, are you a master teacher of Israel? And you don't understand the things you've been teaching? Nicodemus, I just told you that you're not all right with me that you're not all right with God. You're very religious, but you're not okay. And you don't want to understand these things? Truly I say to you, we speak that which we know, and that's the church. The church was speaking what they knew. And we bear witness to that which we have seen. They saw Jesus baptized in the Jordan River, and the Spirit as a dove come down and, upon, and, and light upon him, and the Father spoke from heaven, this is my son, whom I am well pleased. He said, we know what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. All the miracles that Jesus did, the Jews would not receive that as a witness. The reason why Jesus did miracles was why? To prove, to prove that he was the Messiah, King of Israel. But they didn't want to hear. They didn't, the miracles didn't do them any good. He said, I told you earthly things and you not believe. How can I tell you heavenly things? You cannot believe them. And no one has ascended into heaven, but he who came down from heaven, even the Son of Man. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Now, Moses in the wilderness. That's this period of time when Moses took Egypt, or Israel out of Egypt and in the promised land. Israel was disobedient. Bob, have you seen any of these rattlesnakes around here? Sidewinders? I've seen them, yeah. Yeah. Marilyn, I don't think you've seen one here, have you? No. Well, yeah, you have. Going down the road. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're dangerous, aren't they? Yes, they are. They're deadly. Now, Israel, because they were disobedient and bad, God sent fiery serpents among them. And the serpents would bite them, and they would sting, it would sting, the, the venom was like fire. And they would be just absolutely suffering to death. Suffering, terribly suffering. And Moses was instructed by God to make a serpent out of brass. Brass in the Bible is the type of what, Marilyn? Redemption. Judgment. 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 To make a serpent, to make a snake out of brass and put it up on a pole. Now the the uh, the old physicians and doctor symbol was a serpent on a pole. Now this is real simple. It's kind of like the confusion of religion today. Moses pounded out a serpent made of brass and he put it on a pole. You know what they had to do to get saved, to, to save their lives? You know what Israel, the, these people that were bitten with these serpents, what did they have to do? Simple. All they had to do was look to the pole. That sound too simple? The world of religion today has so confused the plan of salvation that as all they had to do was look to that serpent, looked to that brass serpent on that pole and they were cured and they had no pain instantly. 
And in the New Testament times that we live in today, all we have to do is ask God to save us in, for Jesus' sake. That's the price on the pole. Jesus said that. Even as the serpent was lifted up, even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up. How? On the cross of Calvary. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ died for our sins, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Right there. That we didn't have to suffer. He died for our sins. Ephesians, the third chapter again, it says, to preach the, he said it was given to me to be a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power, the energizing of his power. To me, the very least of all saints was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Now that word unsearchable there, in, in Greek it means untrackable. Uh, Bob, did you ever track anything? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Now, my neighbor down there in the Old River area, they gave some chickens to me. Remember, Marilyn? They gave chickens to me, but they didn't know where they were. And what did I tell them? I said, that's no problem. I'll track them. <laughs> and I went over there and I tracked those chickens exactly where they were, didn't I? And I got them. Man, he said, what kind of tracker are you? And I said, I track raccoons and lions and bears and deer and everything you can think of and even bugs and lizards and worms sometimes. You can track them. One to one of my church members place yesterday, I had to take some stuff for her and walked up there and all the way there was a trail that looked like a trail of blood. And all the way up there and finally I got to where it was and there's a big puddle of it right there. I said, that looks like blood. And Sharon says, I think that was chocolate. <laughs> and it was in, a, in somebody's uh, trash bag and it was leaking all the way down there. It looked like a trail of blood. I have seen people shoot deer and we have to track them by the trail, by their footprints and also by the trail of blood. Mm. It says the unsearchable, untrackable riches of Christ. It's untrackable by the world. There are secret societies in the world, aren't there? Many, many secret societies. The Skull and Bones, which both Bushes were uh, uh, a members of, and probably their father Preston, and all of them, grandfather, all of them were all skull and bones. A secret society, and that secret society, according to some, is to manipulate and control the world. We have all types of the Illuminati. We have the Knights of Columbus. We have the Masonic Lodge. We, I mean, there's a ton of secret societies out there. And the reason why it's secret because the mysteries or their secrets are hidden from the public. My uncle was trying to get me to join the Masonic Lodge for years. And I actually had the book of secrets from the Masonic Lodge. And Blackie came over to my house one day and I said, look at this, look at this Blackie. He looked at me and he just looked with his mouth wide open and he said, these are the secrets of the Masonic Lodge. And I said, well, they're not secrets to me. There they are, right there. He said, nobody's supposed to have this. Nobody's supposed to have that. Well, I got a copy of it anyway. It's a blue book. The secrets were not hidden from me anymore. Secrets are secrets to the uninitiated. The secret of the grace of God is secrets to those that don't know the grace of God and haven't experienced the grace of God. To bring to light what is the administration of the mystery, the secrets for which for ages was hidden in God who created all things, in order that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church. Now this word church here, the Catholic Church, the Catholic, or not the Catholic, well, the Catholics did this also, but the Church of England, when they did the King James Bible, it says the assemblies. It doesn't say church. The word church is a congregation, a visible congregation of believers in one area. It's an assembly, it's a congregation. Through the assemblies, to the rulers 
and the authorities in heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and confidence and access to him. Therefore I ask you not to lose heart in tribulation on your behalf, for they are for your glory. We have disease, don't we? Bob, you suffer with various ailments. I suffer with ailments. Marilyn has atrial fibrillation, congestive heart failure, COPD, and diabetes. And you have to fight to stay feeling good, don't you? We have to fight. My back is shot. I can hardly get up at times. My back was ruined when I was 21 years old. I was paralyzed. They operated on me for nine hours and just took all of my discs out of the lower part of my back. I was six foot two. Now I'm a midget. <laughs> my back's all crumbled up with scoliosis. My neck's been broken twice. And I suffered with those pains every day. My colon was burned up with radiation because of cancer. I've been gutted and put back together with operations. There are scars on the front and back and sideways all over me from operations and bullet holes and knife wounds and everything else. Things blowing up in my hands and whatever. So I have a lot of ailments. I have to watch what I eat. I can't eat what I want. Marilyn wanted butter and on cinnamon toast this morning. You couldn't have any sugar. You couldn't have any butter with salt in it. But I did it, didn't I? Saltless butter on toast that had just a tiny bit yeah, of butter. sodium in it. For example, I don't eat yeah. salt butter. Yeah. None. And I put, I put it on there and toasted it up real good and I gave it to you and I don't know how it tasted, but you did eat it, I think. Half of it. Half of it. She said it tastes like lard, but it doesn't have salt in it. <laughs> That's it. We, are, we suffer with these maladies, don't we? We suffer with these diseases. My friend down there, Harold, had pancreatic cancer. He did not know it until it just completely stopped him from walking. It, was, it went into his bones. He could not move or walk or anything. He was finally dead fast. And he wanted to die. But he wanted to know Jesus before he did. Bob. A question I have. We have the Roman Catholic Church, okay? Yes. What are we? What we? I'm Baptist. Yeah, I'm an yeah, Anabaptist. Baptist. I'm an old Christian. That's what I am. Okay, so yeah. these are Baptists. That, that belong to Baptist Church. Yes. Okay. How many, I mean, you know more than I do, how many different churches in this country has? How many what? Different churches. The, 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 different churches. The Seventh-day Adventist yes. and the Catholic and the Christian and the Baptist and God, I mean, so many. Well, the Seventh-day Adventist has warmed over Judaism. The Catholic Church did uh, declare that Saturday was no longer the Sabbath but Sunday. Saturday is still the Sabbath, people. Mm -hmm. They're a Seventh-day Baptist. Yeah, Seventh-day Baptist. Seventh-day Baptist, they will only will worship on Saturday. The early churches worshipped on every day. Every day. So, the early Christians were secret society. They had to hide from the Catholics and hide from the Muslims. They had to so hide. basically, this is a Baptist church. Yes, this is, this is Discover the Word Missionary Baptist Church. And the reason why it's called Missionary Baptist Church, there are some Baptists, what they call primitive Baptists, that didn't believe in missions. So we, as this little church, believe in missions. We go out and we try to see people saved. The primitive Baptists say either you're going to be saved or you're going to be lost. There's nothing you can do about it. They were what they call hard shell Baptists. And so er, the early Southern Baptists and early missionary Baptists, it was the first Orthodox Southern missionary Baptist of Bakersfield or wherever. We study the Bible, so we call it Discover the Word Missionary Baptist Church. We do believe we do believe that people can be saved and Where we have religion. The born Christian comes in here. What? The born Christian or whatever is other. It's the name on the name 
born Christian or something. Well, born again Christian. Born again Christian. Born again Christian. That means like just happened there in the third chapter. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. If you're going to understand the kingdom of God, you must be born again. He was religious. Now, the Seventh-day Adventists basically are reformed Judaism. They believe in Jesus, but they still want to keep the law. They still want to practice the Sabbath keeping and all of that. Jesus is our Sabbath. He is everything rolled up in one. We don't. Paul said to eat whatever you want to eat. Drink whatever you want to drink. He said it doesn't matter. Because Christ was our fulfillment of the law. Well, uh, when the Catholic Church started out with this Friday view, penny uh, meat, oh, yes. or anything. They, they had all kinds of inventions. You couldn't eat meat on Friday because uh, the meat represented it Christ. So you had to eat fish on Friday. So mm -hmm. everybody in school, when I was going young, they had to eat fish on Friday. Yeah, fish whether on you Friday. liked it or not. I had the same thing, yeah. Yeah. That, so, that was a Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church had great influence. The Catholic Church ruled the whole Western world at one time. Oh, definitely. You, nobody oh, could be Europe. married. You, no oh. one could be married outside of the Catholic Church. If you were married outside of the Catholic Church, you were not married. In South America, even today, down in Costa Rica and Colombia and Argentina and those places, unless you have a license by the Catholic Church and married, you're considered man and woman. Hmm. Wherever they can, they told, just like Islam. When Islam comes here, they don't want to obey the Constitution of the United States. They want Sharia law. Anybody that comes to America needs to denounce whatever they came from and, and to so, obey the Constitution of the United yeah. States. Mm. All right? We'll have a word of prayer. We'll dismiss this class, and we'll start another if you want. We'll even have Bible questions. Our Father, we come to you, we send this message out. I pray for those out there that might not know you that, that this message may be a clear road to salvation for them. Father, please forgive me where I fail you and come with my shortcomings. And I pray that you use this message all over the world for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name.